Mission complete. Running preliminary diagnostics. Hello everybody, Darren here and welcome back to Ixion. Now a quick heads up if you're a fan of the series and you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, leaving a like or a comment, and if you really can't get enough, consider becoming a channel member so you can grab episodes early and in bulk. So, we've just arrived back presumably from our test jump to Proxima Centauri, and we've arrived to find a very different looking solar system. The moon was seemingly shattered during our initial test jump of the Vol engine, and the Earth seems to have lost its biosphere, presumably as a result of the destabilization of the moon. The solar system is also in some sort of advanced state, so we're going to have to discover where the different planetary bodies are currently at in their orbits. So perhaps, due to Einstein's theory of special relativity, maybe a lot more time has passed here than it has for us on our journey, because of course we were traveling faster than light. So, I'm picking up right where we left off, having just arrived, and we now have to figure out what we're going to do, seeing as we're now seemingly cut off from any other humans. All right, ladies and gentlemen, things are not looking good at all, and we're going to have to run a systems diagnostic to see what the situation is. And, of course, listen to how the people are feeling about this one. We're going to have to feed the crew and repair the tycoon, because, of course, we have now taken whole damage from doing our vol jump. So the vol charge and the vol jump allows us to go interstellar between stars, whereas the EKP, the electrokinetic propulsors, allow us just to get around the individual system that we're in. Eve gave that a bit of a test fire going to Mars and back in the previous episode as well. So let's hop inside, see what people are saying. So just for a brief overview as to the current layout of this place, just to get everyone back up on the same page, we have our docking bay where ships go to and from, the Tycoon. We have our tech lab where we're currently researching a probe launcher. It's actually part of the next objective anyway, so that's worked out quite well. We're just about 60% done on that. We then have the... EVA airlock repairs up to 48 units of hull per cycle for four units of alloys. So interestingly, we've actually taken some hull damage. Now it seems like we have a permanent chunk taken out of the Tycoon, that that's part of the objective, whereas we have a regular depletion of our hull, 28 per cycle, which is pretty pretty large amount per cycle. And we have to be supplying a constant feedback of alloys. I always want to say alloy. I'm playing Horizon. Uh, Zero Dawn before, it always makes you think Aloy. Anyways, once we feed back alloys regularly enough, then the hull will start to repair itself, but it's actually capped at a sort of an efficiency rating. So the worse your hull is, the f more efficient you are at repairing it. And I guess that's because it's easier to identify these new breaches. Whereas, if you can't quite find it, it's only 1% damage somewhere, you have to go out and find it, it takes you longer, less efficient. So that's the situation there. We're going to keep that turned off right now. We might need the alloys for later, so we'll wait. The other bit of layout, we have our three insect farms here supplying some food. We have our storage facilities here, construction. This is people where people get food from. And then, of course, our housing residences down here, which both have two little events right now. Let's check it out. Administrator, the crew are asking a lot of questions about the state of the Earth. Munchy behavioral algorithms predict a decrease in productivity of 22% if those questions go unanswered. As administrator of the Tycoon Station, you should find some answers quickly. Commit to sending an expedition to Earth. Yep, of course. And the next one. Administrator, you may have noticed that the moon has broken apart. Yeah, funny, funnily enough, actually, I did notice that. Just happened to just catch a glimpse of it out the window there. The crew are aware of this, and many rumors are spreading throughout the station. You'll have to make an official statement. So we could say it was humanity's fate. Evidence suggests a great deal of time has passed in the solar system. The moon's destruction is obviously a consequence of humanity's selfish and warlike instincts. That's interesting. We could say this is always going to happen. They must have done it, right? They nuked it, probably. We could say Dolus has many enemies. Something must have happened during the test jump, being such a high-profile event, and all those naysayers out there. It was the perfect opportunity for them to strike and sabotage our plans. Or we could say it's our fault. Despite our robust safety measures, a system failure at the exact moment of the jump caused the engine to drag a part of the moon with it into self-similar space. This failure has cost humanity dearly. Our mission is now to rebuild. Now, I don't know what you guys would pick. I'm, I'm likely to try and tell the truth, or at least the truth as I perceive it. Of course, we had that handy cam footage of the Dolus launch counting down. And it did seem like it was it was on us, but it could be sabotage. 
But I'm gonna say it's our fault and just take the ownership. And look, if it's not, then no big deal. <laughs> we'll figure that out later. So we got a trust hit of 5%. We'll build them back up, no problem. We're actually gaining trust still right now, so that's all good. Okay, so we've got a few mission objectives. Repair the tycoon, feed the crew, and send an expedition to Earth. Now, in feeding the crew, it says resolve the event the ghosts of Urshanabi on the planetary system map. So if we hop back out, we've got the Earth right next to us, and then the Urshanabi right here. Kind of tempted to go for the Urshanabi first, so we're going to go out there. Going to send the Ripley, our sign ship, just to venture out following that kind of orbit round to the Urshanabi and see what's going on. Oh, well, actually, we can click it. Our sensors have detected the Urshanabi. The ship is broken in two. Oh, that's not good. And it's not transmitting any signals. Hmm. Well, for those who don't remember, the Urshanabi are the guys giving us food and manpower in the beginning of the first episode. Now, I don't know how many years have passed or solar cycles, but, um, not looking good. All right, so... Although maybe not that long, seeing as it's still there, but who knows, who knows. I mean, I guess if it doesn't have any velocity, it's not going anywhere. Um, let's see, feed the crew. Yeah, so what's our gain rate? Well, it says we're gaining food at the moment. We're searching the probe launcher and then go to Earth. Okay, well, there's not much else for us to do then. We'll just let time play. And we'll speed up through getting our probe. I mean, that would be one of the saddest sights ever, to see something like that. The moon's one thing, but to see, like, a completely barren and desolate Earth is pretty heartbreaking. Now, oh, we've actually got quite a lot of power reserve. Sign ship has arrived at the Urshanabi. Let's check it out. Our sensors have detected the enemy read that the phrase, whoever helps Dolos is an enemy of humanity has been daubed in large letters on the wreck of the Urshanabi. Mummified bodies have been attached to its hull. Oh my god. Right, so we're considered the bad guys. Are we the bad guys? <laughs> and because they helped us before, our first trading partner, it seems like they've been attacked. Well, we can gather the remaining resources, it'll take a day. So we best, we best do it. Anything else I haven't looked at yet? Space interactions, hull, trust and stability. If stability is low, your workers will go on strike. Stability affects the trust of the crew, and rolling over the stability icon lets you know why. Alright, cool. All good. Let's let time play. Let's jump back down. Now, I don't think there's anything I need to build. We're just going to wait till... So, we got... <laughs> just right now, actually. We just got our probe launcher technology done, so let's get it sorted. So, 90 alloys. Oh my god, we don't even have enough right now. I'll have to tear, tear down one of these or something. And that should give us what we need. Uh, let's see. Does it fit there? It actually does fit right there. It blocks one of the exits. I don't think that matters, though. We'll just pop it down right there. And I still need to move this docking station over a little bit. So I'm going to tell them to dismantle this stockpile. And we'll just see how we get on with that. If that gives us 90 or not. I don't know if we get... Well, we can actually check the prices. Yeah, we should get enough then. So we just overbuilt just a little bit. But that should give us what we need to get a probe, and then we should be able to go out and find some iron out in the solar system. Alright, cool. Looking good. We'll speed up time a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Do they not have a, a road here? They're not actually doing anything right now. Oh yeah, they don't. Not at the connection point. So let's just add the roads down like that. Tidy up our little roads a little bit here. Cool. So I think the... Yeah, we've got two constructors heading out now. So one should do the building and the other should do the roads pretty much. Although they both might... Do, they might both do the roads actually thinking about it. Yeah, no time at all. Alright, let's check it out. So what do we got? The signed ship is completed. So what do we got? The ship was full of food. I hope the expiration date hasn't passed. Everything is ready for extraction. Yeah, that's the thing. We don't know the date. So... <laughs> it's like, oh, it lasts till 2050. Well, it's like, it could be like the year 3000 probably now. Alright, 42 food. That'll keep us going for a while. So what we can do now is get our fleet, get the cargo ship to say, yeah, it's already got a priority for food, so they should automatically go out and start getting it. 
Oh yeah, we can actually see them right there. There they go. The Gloose Cap. What a great name. And it can hold 30 resources at once. It's going to have to make a couple trips to get that. And what? It, oh, we've got one crew. They actually have names. Jose Art Ortiz. Jose Ortiz. All right, so the Ripley, very important now, is going to go back and investigate what's going on in the Earth. No signals have been received from the Earth. The ocean seemed to have evaporated, and the surface temperature has risen significantly since the Tikkun was last in orbit. Atmospheric readings indicate the presence of strong dust storms and dangerously high levels of carbon dioxide, radiation, and microplastics. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that we were the ones that did that, but we'll have to see. <laughs> All right, let's hop back in. All right, we're loading up the probe launcher with the alloys needed. Now, I think to make probes, it costs you polymers, so it shouldn't be too bad in getting that sorted. Now, I want to move this over, but I think as long as ships are out and about, we actually, they won't operate if I take this down, so I'll wait until there's a bit of a down period before I ever get rid of it or move it. I just want to move it slightly, really. But I, I guess better sooner than later, because we'll probably always have ships out on the go soon enough. So maybe when we're done with Earth, we'll do that. Alright. Yep, we've just read that. So investigate Dolos headquarters. Investigate personal location. Find my family home. Or scour the globe in search of survivors. Well, let's do Dolos headquarters first to see what happened. If there was any reports filed or anything like that, give us some clues as to what was going on. Alright, our cargo ship is just coming back. It's got 30 food on it. Nice. And as we hop in, we should see it pulling in. There we go. It's I love that. It's so cool. Immersion in games is just such a big thing for me. Like, having this one-to-one -one connection. Not seeing any, like, glaring gamification of things. Like, actually seeing the ship pull in when it's coming in on the system map, to me, just is, like, such a nice touch. It's perfect. Love it. All right, and our probe launcher is getting done. Oh, and actually, it's actually a big deal, because you can only have one come in at a time. And it can only have three ships operating it. So if you've got three cargo ships, they could get backed up in a bit of a traffic blockade, if you will, as they're waiting to come in. So it actually does have a gameplay effect, too. Uh, right, so our assigned ship is... The converted oil rig where Dolus, oh sorry, which Dolus used as its state-of-the-art headquarters is gone. Only a few metal scraps remain, scattered across an expanse of dusty, cracked earth. There is no sign of survivors. I mean, there is craters on the earth as well that are massive, so... It seems like it's even lost its, most of its atmosphere. Ready for extraction. 20, uh, 45 sci science and 225 alloys. That's a lot of alloys, actually. That'll keep us going, then. Next one. Sure, look up. Actually, yeah, we'll look at our home next, uh, later. Let's go check for survivors. It's gonna take three cycles. We're on cycle 46, by the way. Now, my understanding is that we went to Proxima Centauri to do our routine tests and then came back. But in the cutscene, it was almost like we just traveled straight into our own system again, if you know what I mean. Like, as soon as we went through. That little, like, abstraction of light. The cutscene immediately cut to us arriving back here. So I don't know if we ever even did get out to do our tests, or if it was a complete failure of the Vol engine that we didn't actually go where we thought we did. We just essentially just ripped the moon apart and we're where we started. I, I don't know, but I would, I would assume we did go to Proxima Centauri. Probe launcher done? It is indeed. All right, so we can build a probe. It can detect and an analyze nearby stellar objects, revealing them on the planetary system map. Three polymer. Very cheap, actually. Not bad at all. That's cool. We can see the people in there working away, figuring out how to build the probe and getting everything together. Three polymers seems very cheap. <laughs> Uh, actually, and now, so our cargo ship will tell it to also go pick up those alloys, right? We'll t turn off the priorities for people and food. The only priority is now on alloys. That's the only thing that's available anyway. So it still would have been the same thing. But I like having it be blank and just knowing what it's going to be going out and getting. So it should head out, head out and get that stuff now. Next time it comes back in, delivers something, goes back out. 
got a day and a half to go to get our the rest of this event and then collect our science. And once our probe is done, we can then send it out. All right, probe is ready to go. Find an asteroid with iron deposits is our next objective. All right, here we are. So we'll just grab launch probe. And based on where we hover over, you can see it can detect all these different types of elements. So... Let's just go around the asteroid belt and see if there's anything close by. So there's like a lot of tech somewhere over here. There's a huge iron deposit there, it seems. High estimate of resource deposit. Medium a bit further over. Well, we need iron, so that's FE. Alright, let's just do that and we'll make another probe and then just go somewhere else. So right about there. And there goes the probe, heading out to that little location over there. Alright, sweet. So what we'll do is just go back in, queue up another one. We can queue them up to just auto-build. You can't store them. You have to just launch them as you make them, as far as I know. How's everybody doing, by the way? The hull is dramatically, dramatically losing its um, integrity. Resolve the event on Earth, feed a thousand crews. So we fed about 200 at the moment. So what I'm going to do as well, let's get rid of this bit of the road. And I'm going to put down two more food factories. Two more insect Road farms. Now we'll just pause construction for a moment. Because they're going to require alloys that we don't yet have. But I think we need that. Our consumption rate is... Four. It says we're making food right now, but that's just because of the constant deliveries. It's not actually what we're producing here. Natively. So once the last bit of food has come in from that cargo, then we're going to be on our own. And I think we're going to be consuming four, but only making three, right? This is three. So we need to be making five. That's why I put down two. All right, what do we got? So the sign ship has done its thing. After a long search, we have found nothing but rubble. We've seen no signs of life, not even a corpse. Okay, that's actually kind of good news, right? It means that maybe we're way into the future and they evacuated. Anyway, the Lunaclism. That's such a cool name. Seems to have caused a series of events that precipitated the collapse of thermo-industrial civilization. The Earth has become a toxic and arid wasteland scoured by harsh winds. No more... Oh, now more inhospitable than Mars. Wow. The only remnant of civilization we found was a fall in steel, where the city of Washington once stood. Stuck in a crevice, it had been sheltered from the wind. A prayer imploring divine forgiveness was engraved in gold on its surface. 97 alloys, 149 polymers, and 45 more research. And now we'll go see if we can find our personal family home. Which honestly seems completely irrelevant in the, in the grand scheme of things. I wouldn't be like, oh, the earth's been destroyed? I wonder what's going on with my house. Each of their own. So there we go. We have the different deposits. What do we got? 55, 519, and 57. Now I'm wondering, could we move over there to make loading up that stuff quicker? Is that how that works? No, it seems like you can get into the orbit of things, but we can't get necessarily over there. We could go to the orbit of Earth. Would that make any difference? 0.6 cycles. Let's do it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. So I'm originally from Ireland. People often ask me where I'm from. So we could park right over there. I could see if my dog's still alive. Alright, um... Let's hop back out. I don't know why we'd go there. You think, if anything, like, not trust would go down, but just morale would go down. Holy crap. Alright, we've got another probe. Let's send it out. Let's maybe look for some tech. Or another planet. So we have the orbital rings here. I think what we can do is just basically scan along one of the rings and we should find... See, there's something here. So there's, it's likely there's what we got. It's tech, actually. I'm guessing there might be a planet there. All right, so that probe is on its way east, if you want to think of it that, uh, east of the Urshanabi. Is there a northwest, south, and east, you know, in space? By the way, this says moving to Earth, and it still says we're moving. I'm guessing we're there now. Oh, right. I think actually we were rotating to get in position. All 
Now I can see the moon way off in the distance. I love that. Okay, cool. Is it rotating? I don't even think it's rotating. Oh, it is. It's just really slow. Anyway, sorry for being so distracted. I just love sci-fi things. I don't know. I just, it's not even sci-fi things. I just love orbital mechanics. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what can we do now? Well, we're loading up alloys. That's good. We can build a stockpile again. So, a second stock, another stockpile. The one that we basically tore down. Just get that back. We've got room for a, load, a row of houses here. If we wanted to. Can we open this up yet? We need electronics in order to get into there. Okay, so we haven't got that just yet. Uh, we can also unpause these things, let these get constructed, the extra food. We have the power availability to do it. And we could even now maybe, while we're waiting here, get the extra solar panel. Oh no, we need more electronics to do it. So we can't get any more power just yet. Probe has completed its scan and discovered a new point. Hey, it's Venus. A science ship team has completed a task. The scientist is just done at Earth, so we can send them over to Venus and see what's going on. So what does it say? Probe data is revealed a mining and industrial infrastructure below the surface of Venus. Oh my god. It's like a super hot, inhospitable planet. And that they built... Well, it makes sense to build some sort of industrial infrastructure there, I guess. Um, let's see what we got. A huge crevasse cuts through the ground where your home once stood. There is no trace of civilization. 45 tech, 121... Alloys and nine electronics. Excellent. That's enough to move into the next sector. A new request your so we'll just tell the ship to pick up the electronics as a priority. Medium priority on alloys, medium priority on polymer. So we'll grab those two over time. Grab the electronics now. And construct a mining ship in the docking bay. So that's what we want to do to actually... Oops, sorry, I didn't even mean to click that. Administrator, to safeguard humanity, we must find survivors and increase the station's population. We don't have time to go through the classic reproductive cycle of your species. Adding new members to the Tycoon's crew will have a positive impact on morale. Cryonic stasis, a practice pri pioneered by Dolus, was in growing use even before we left the solar system. There's a very high likelihood that cryonic pods containing survivors await your discovery. So find and collect 500. Wow. So I think that is probably the only way we get new people, right? Through events and cryonic pods. Great. We are, by the way, further into the game than I've ever gone. So it's all new territory for me now. Um, okay. So, hull integrity is still rapidly falling. Little, um, little alarming. We could do hull repair now, now that we have some alloys coming in on the regular. So we'll click that. 76% efficiency, so I'm fine with that. We have an event down here. We want to build a mining ship. So let's queue up th that up next. 20 polymers, one crew. And an event down here. Mission reports from the expedition to Earth are being discussed amongst the crew. The thought of having lost all loved ones left behind had destroyed morale for many of them. The symptoms of this trauma have now been collated under the medical designation, quote, Dead Earth Sickness. A negative one to stability permanently because of the report from Earth. So we should never have gone there. Oh my god. Alright, cool. Hopefully we can turn that around in the future someday. Maybe if they find out that everyone was actually successfully evacuated, maybe then they wouldn't be so sad. Cryonic centers. These are the, are the things, the building that opens the cryonic pods, increasing your population. They can be found on expeditions using your science ships. Oh, you know what? They might even be in other systems. Might not just be in this system. Anyway. Alright, we can get rid of that. So tech-wise, what are we doing? Nothing. Now, if you're not doing anything with tech, you gain technology passively. So the next one costs us 20. And I don't think there's anything that we can get for 20. Nope. So we'll just have to leave it. And we could power it down if we really wanted to, but I don't think we need to. We've also got optimal working conditions. So there's 199 workers in the sector, and there's 127 that are needed. So that's fine. So everyone's working just fine. There's people without a job, even. Um, potentially. Okay. And then our sector stability. Negative one from the death of Earth. Plus one from hull integrity being over 25%. That's good. And one from people having houses. Good. Okay. All looking good then. Now, did we... We want to move... The science ship is getting the rest of the science out of here. So once we do that, we'll queue up a new project. And then we'll send them out to the east. Now, have we got our mining ship yet? We have. It's called the Cataphract. 
Great name. So we have 631 iron available. We'll just stick this on. Can I not do that? Is this not built yet? Maybe I made a mistake. I don't know why I can't click that. You're supposed to just be able to say, do that. We'll just wait a minute. Maybe it's because this place is busy. Oh, sorry. It's not built yet. My bad. My bad. It's not built yet. Sorry. I thought we'd already built it. Other oh, ship is just transferring its resources. The Gloose Cap. And then we're pulling in the polymers and all of that. So this should be the building of the mining ship now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Yep, as soon as that's done, we'll send it out to go get some of that iron, and then we're going to have to refine it. Oh, actually, that's what we should get in tech now. Now that tech is coming up again. We'll have to get a steel mill. Transforms 15 iron into 15 alloy every one cycle. We're going to need it. All right, we are well on our way. Although, and food should be stable now, I think. Yeah, we're making 5.6 food. And we're consuming 4.2. Now, really, it should just be 5, right? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Maybe there's just a little hangover from before. I'll set this to alloys. So we can store up even more. And that's all good. Don't think we need to build those houses. I have a feeling we're not going to need them. Because we're probably going to go into other sectors. And we're building back up our hull. So there we go. 11 points we're going to gain in hull depletion. So that's just going to be a constant drain on our alloys. And you can actually see the little construction ships kind of going around now on the outskirts. They're very hard to see. They're very faint. But there they are. All right. The mining ship is now constructed. So we'll just go into fleet management. Now we can set it onto high priority to get some iron. And then in the planetary system map, we should be able to see it kind of... Moving out. There we go. It's on its way. Now, the science ship is the one that collects the science, right? I think so. Yeah, it's his processing science. Good. Then we're going to go straight out to Venus. Now, while we're doing that, I suppose, let's make another probe. We have the polymers for it. In fact, let's toggle on auto build then, because I think even after this one, we'll just keep making them for a little while. Seems like we have enough. Do we need any for this? No, we just need food, people, electronics, and then alloys. Yeah, basically we just need to now find um, cryonic pods as well. And with the electronics, we can also stop building for a moment and build, sorry to stop repairing for a moment and build the new set of solar panels so i'll just wait until that is done boom so let's pause it we'll build so let's just have a read of it really quickly converts the star's energy into electricity 45 extra power 45 polymer one electronics let's go and what do they look like actually just before we click it on there they are they're going on the kind of thicker bits all right great so we can't repair while we're doing that but we should be fine just to be able to do that. And it doesn't take too long anyway. Oh, it's repairing while it's queuing up all this stuff. I think this doesn't get built until everything's delivered, right? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, let's just see how that's going to work. Because once that gets everything, I'll be curious to see if it builds and stops automatically or if I have to tell it to stop repairing. Almost finished with our smelting tech as well. I find it very anxiety-inducing, the idea that we'd be smelting within a space station. It just seems like it's so rife for going wrong. So how are we doing? Science ship is done. Let's head out to Venus. Earth has 241 alloys to collect still, and the cargo ship should be busy doing that. We've got a new probe. I don't really know what we should be looking for, but I guess cryonic pods, maybe points of interest will give us that, or objectives related points of interest. So let's just again, let's check all the way around the asteroid belt. I'm just, I'm waiting to see if the notification one pops up at all. 
What about doing this? I'm not really seeing it at all, actually. So maybe... Maybe it won't be as easy as I thought. Okay. Well, let's just go somewhere kind of closer by, actually, first. So there's ice over there, which can be used for food. I think what's probably best is finding, like, Mars, right? So... That's Earth, so Mars should be here somewhere. There's a lot of iron right there. A lot of iron right here as well. Could be broken down ships or something. That might be it there. There's tech related on this ring right there, so let's go. Hoping that's gonna be Mars. Maybe everyone's just moved to Mars. That could be the, the case, maybe. In terms of feeding the crew, though, we're doing good, making more than enough food, and we just need to feed a thousand people over the next the several cycles, so all good. Repair the tycoon, build a steel mill. So we've unlocked that now through science. And uh, oh, it's, it's a pretty big building, actually. How many people have to work this? 30 people. Hmm. I've got an idea. I think I might build this in the other sector. Like, I do have room for it, but... I think it'd be cool because it's a different specialization of building. And I was reading about specialization because I got confused in the last episode. It says that the more buildings... Buildings... Uh, sorry, a sector becomes specialized in a discipline when it has a certain amount of buildings of the same type. Specializations give you a bonus that support the associated sector. So, a lot of these buildings have to do with space, space, space. Even tech is to do with space. So, I think this sector will end up getting specialized for space stuff. So, I'm thinking, why not just open this instead? We have everything we need now. And we'll go into sector two, and that's where we'll build our steel mill. That seems to make sense to me. And we should have the alloys to kind of get in there. And build a couple of things, you know, to get started. Oh, and interestingly, the people that I've built all these houses for, they can actually live in that sector. So we probably do have too many houses, actually. There we go, all the forklifts are just bringing all the goods to the, to the gate. That's one thing I don't like, I guess, is that the forklifts disappear. They don't just go back and collect and come back again. It's a small thing, but it's everything else has pretty good continuity in the game. That's the only thing where it's like, oh, they just they deliver something and then just vanish and then they just come back out again. But whatever, you know, it's not a big deal. It's obviously a conscious decision that they made for whatever reason. Speed, I guess, maybe. All right, cool. We're opening up the next sector. It's exciting. And we're building the... Did we get that extra solar panel yet? Yeah, we're on 87%. Whole integrity is falling while we're building on the external side of things. Population and population management. That's to do with moving them between sectors. I actually know how to do that already, so that's totally fine. Event available. A new sector has successfully been unlocked. This is a historic moment for Dolus AEC and the Tycoon mission. Acknowledged. Hey, there we go. Trust 10%. I'll take it. Oh my god, we're almost at full trust. Oh shit, I had no idea. I had no idea there was going to be a ton of stuff in here. That's great. I just assumed it was going to be blank. It's almost entirely alloys, but then we do have five electronics. So now in this sector, we've got 40 homeless. There's no infirmary here. Oh, and now we've unlocked the resource management screen. So how we can distribute resources between the two places. So let's get started. We'll just build a, a workshop to get construction started. Just build it like that, I guess. And then we'll build a little stockpile right there. I think the first two are free. Build a road coming out. And then they need a mess hall as well. But let's just leave it the way it is and we'll collect that real quickly. So there we go. That road's getting done. We'll collect this. That'll get out of the way and then I'll put the mess hall down right next to it. Actually, I don't know why I'm being like that. I just put it anywhere. It doesn't really matter. We'll move it later probably. Alright, so ultimately, just while things are... Letting let do that in the background. Let's just get a few roads queued up so that we can at least pull resources back to where it needs to go. And then we'll look back in here in a minute. 
But now, interestingly, we have a lot less workers here. We have 10 more than we need. Okay, we're still okay then. And then we want to look to build that um, steel mill in here, right? So we'll create a big area maybe up here or something for the steel area. So cool now that we're in two sectors. I love it. All right, steel mill. And then what we'll have to do is in the resource ma resource management screen. So we have sector one currently has 237 alloys. Sector two is going to actually pile up a bunch anyway. But what we can do is say that it's active in terms of transferring between the two. And then this is active between transferring between the two. And set the desired amount we want in both. So I want 100 in here. Actually, I guess I want 50 in here. And in sector one, I always want 250. And the reason I want more in Sector 1, for the most part, is because um, it needs to do the hull repairs. Whereas this one doesn't need to do hull repairs, it needs to make iron in here. So that should be okay, and make, make alloys. So we'll just tell them to pick up as much as they can, and all of this is going to be kind of picked up, stored in here. And then once they get to about 50, they're going to start driving it all the way out here and storing it out this way instead. We're actually pretty full right now anyway, <laughs> so I'm kind of overbuilding. But anyway, let's get the... Oh yeah, I can't actually build anything else yet. I wonder why that is. The sector requires a stockpile. You can build one now for free. Well, I've done that. Do I need another one, maybe? Maybe. Oh yeah, I built another one for free. Weird. I guess you have to build two. Uh, so the other thing that... Oh, food. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So you get one alloy, one food. So you can build and you can feed. Good, good, good. All right, so these guys are going to need houses. So it's 15 per house, so we need at least three houses. And then they're going to be good to go. So we'll get that queued up as well. So we'll just cram it in somewhere at the back. Is that okay? Uh, one. Just do it there. Great. Uh, we could even say, you know what, I probably won't need these, so just... How do I get rid... There we go. Get rid of this. And get rid of this. I'm probably forgetting loads of things now. So we've arrived at Venus. Alright, so according to reports from the exploration team, the subterranean site consists of mining infrastructure and a large assembly line. Many embalmed bodies were found in the area. The line seems to have been originally used to fabricate solar sails. Tycoon engineers suggest that with minor repairs, it could be restarted. So we could restart the assembly line, dismantle it, or leave Morbahan Station altogether. No. Restart it, obviously. Ten alloys takes four cycles. Let's do it. Tell the crew, um, the cargo ship to go do it. And hope for the best. Now, does our science ship need to be there? I don't think so, right? Oh, it probably does, actually, once it gets delivered, yeah. 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 Now, interestingly, by the way, in case you're wondering, the mining ship that goes off and gets the iron doesn't deliver it back on its own. Instead, it actually just kind of stores it up there, and the cargo ship is the thing that has to go f to and from to get it. So that's a very in uh, in important difference. Hey, we did find Mars, and there is cryonic pods. An old disused complex named Richter's facility has been located on the surface of Mars. Excellent. Now we've got another probe. I reckon just keep trying to find planets. It seems like a good idea. Although these are the rocky planets. Maybe we should try to find Mercury? There might be something going on with Mercury. There's something right there, actually. That must be it. Okay, the next one's on its way. Man, I am loving this. I think it's so cool. I'm really intrigued to find out like what's going on with people and what's going to happen. And the Tycoon got its extra... We got our extra power, so that's all good. And then what we'll probably want to invest in is batteries. Do we have the technology for that now? We do. So we could do a polymer refinery, electronics refinery. Batteries. I feel like refinement economy is probably more important than storing power at the beginning. So let's do the refinement economy first. And the cryonic center. Actually, cryonic center for storing... Yeah, let's get that. Have that ready to go. Waking people up. All right, what do we got? So, did I set that? That's food and that's alloys. So they've already been getting, they're getting picked up. So let's just extend the roads. And that should let us pick up most of the things around here. 
They've only got the one constructor at the moment. Alright, 58 power available. Hull integrity is gaining, but very slowly. Why is it so slow? Hull repair is 38. 33 from the airlock at 71 efficiency, and from optimal working conditions, plus 5. But from opening a second sector, it actually got reduced negative 16. Oh, wow. So I guess in theory, what you could do is build a second EVA airlock over here. How many people work that? Nine? And then repair in two places at once. Probably be a good idea. I mean, certainly you're going to need to do that at some point. But as long as it's gaining, I'm not, I'm not too worried. It's just only going to get better from now, so... Probe has completed its scan and discovered a new po point of interest. Boom! Mercury. Nailed it. I'm nailing this. These planets at the moment. Jupiter's gravitational influence increases Mercury's orbital eccentricity over time. Mercury's path could eventually cross that of Venus. I never knew that. Or even Earth. We need not worry about any proposed nightmare collision scenarios. However, such an event would occur millions of years from now. Well, we don't know. <laughs> Philip Stanford. Space and something. The full quote hasn't been written out. Filled with red rage, I sing an endless song of grief and false glory of s and strife ever long. Take hold of your apathy, strangle it and hark to my cry of denial screamed out in the dark. Damn. Let's have a read of this one. Venus. The reflective properties of the sulfuric acid clouds would keep unwanted observers unaware. Hmm. No signals detected. Earth. Alright, so those are all the rocky planets. Now we have to go further and find the gas giants. Do we have another probe? We do. Well, we don't have to, but I'd kind of like to find everything. Ice out here. A lot of ice right there. Could just be comets or something. We're getting some tech readings here and some carbon and stuff, actually. There we go. That's got to be it, right? Let's go. Julio Escobar is our crew member on this mining ship, the Cataphract. Current action standing by. It must be full. Oh, you know what? I never told this to pick up the iron. That could be why. Yeah, that could be why. 226 is available for it to go get. And it's not getting anything else right now. There is cryonic pods available for collection, so yeah, just go get them. Get them right now. That's high priority, and then this is going to be medium priority. So it has to go all the way out here to get these 20 and bring them all the way back, but they seem to be available without even doing the event. Interesting. Okay. And it's currently carrying 10... Why is it going there? Oh, because it's... Sorry, yeah, it's delivering the alloys here first for the science ship. Sorry, I forgot. Okay, cool. Great. I like that. When you zoom out further, you can just see a more abstract icon of where things are going. All right, cool. All good. Let's get rid of those notifications. And I'll top back in. We're looking good. We have our solar panels on the exterior now. We can see some ship, uh, little ships going around to repair things. Little robots. Our trust is through the roof. People are happy. We have food. Looking good. Things are looking good, I would say. And we've opened up into a second sector. So we just want to grab a few more of those alloys and then build our steel mill so we can actually refine what we're bringing back. So what we're going to need to do then is set up a stockpile. Probably a couple stockpiles right there. Factory steel mill right here. I'll put it right at the back, actually, I guess. Yeah, just to get this m a bit more organized now, I can put the stockpiles right in on the sides. Yeah, like that, and like that. So these are going to be doing iron. And that will take in iron. Sweet. All right, that requires like 30 workers or something, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a lot. So do we even have that? Uh, n we actually don't. So people will be overworked in here. But we can decommission one of the stockpiles or something just to free up some workers. But we're bringing back those extra 20 people. And we have a few extras in here with 10. 
that could move from here into the other place. So we could do that, start the migration. Population management. So let's say any crew from sector 1, 10, to sector 2. Start the migration, please. Cool. So they're going to be still at optimal 148 people. This will improve a little bit. They need electronics to move into here as well. So electronics... Didn't mean to click that. From sector 1 to sector 2. So we'll, we'll tell them to send a little bit in there. So just keep like, I don't know, 3 in here. And 4 in here. <laughs> Can I not do that? 5? Is that possible? Population transfer complete. Well, let me increase that number. So desired amount in sector 3. Why is that? Oh, that's why. It can't export it back because there's nothing there right now. I get it. So this is on export to sector 2 as a priority. Desired amount here. In this sector, right? I think. It's sector 1, desired amount 3. So my desired amount in here is really a bit more. But let's see if that gets transferred then. Yeah, I can't seem to change that number. But I can change this one. Hmm, I'm a bit confused by that, just a little bit. Because I thought I had it down, nailed down with iron. I was like, yeah, I want 50 in here and 250 there. And they're, they're doing that. They're kind of maintaining that where they can. If they have too much, that's fine. Yeah, it's not that I want you to send any to a sector. I want you to get some. But okay, we'll just leave it for a bit and see if it happens. Oh, I know why. There's no stockpile. That's why. They need a stockpile for it. That's the only reason. Okay, doing that should allow us to do it now. Maybe I'll just wait till it gets built. Okay, please tell me this works now. Sector 2. Yes, it works. Great. Okay, that was the problem. Good. Solved it. Nailed it. <laughs> Alright, so electronics will come in here. This will then be able to get built. We need to hook it up with the road. So to build the road like that, this one is going to move soon. And then we... Oh, another important thing. We need to work on food, right? So food has to be distributed to, to these two places as well. So active... And active. So food in sector 1, I'll keep it at 50. Food in sector 2, keep it at 20. And that should just balance things out. It'll automatically work itself out then. Good. Alright, we're figuring it out. Sorry about the little hitch there, but it's all good. And now we're actually building the steel mill. It's going to look great. And we could refine some of that iron that we're storing up. Uh, so that's another thing, right? The other one is doing iron. So there actually is no stockpile for iron in here. So I wonder how that's going to go, because it does come in through the airlock, but we'll just say, I want you to store the max in here. And hopefully it just knows to bring it in there immediately. And then we need a stockpile for cryonic pods as well. Oh my god, the amount of stockpiles you need. Uh, yeah, I guess... Another one there. That's a bit off. And then we just got the technology for the cryonics center, so that has to be built as well. Three electronics, that's perfect. 40 alloys, 5 power, and 15 workers, which we do not have. We'll waken them up and tell them to work themselves. Could fit it in sideways like that, I guess. Okay, that's a lot of building going on. So, we're getting our cryonics center for people. We're building two stockpiles. One of them, I think, has to be iron, so that you can take in that iron there, yeah. I think that's the way it's got to be, and then they'll distribute it to the other place, which is a case for having a docking um, mechanism in here, so they don't have to do that. And then here, this is going to be the cryonic pods. So, there we go. A little resource management, but it should take care of itself now. Grab the extra alloys around here, check the overall map. Alright. During the repair process, an engineer discovered a number of inscriptions written by 
Ulixes. Oh, sorry. The assembly line is being repaired. The machines belong to the UN and are clearly more advanced than our systems. They're fully automated, and our team has been able to use them to prepare a number of resources for extraction. This guy, Ulixes, he speaks of his time as administrator of Neptune's Hyperlux station, Thiaki. Thiaki. And expresses regret over the fate of the station's residents. Oh, there's 25 people here too. He used the line to repair elements of his ship so that he could reach the headquarters of the Black Market Society. So more tech, more people. 25. Great. Cool. Alright, I think we're going to have to leave it there though. So there's a lot going on. We found a multiple of planet... Ah, uh, there we go. Hey, we found Jupiter as well actually. Nice. Nothing going on there though apparently for us. Um, so yeah, we found all of these rocky planetary bodies. We found some resources that we're now kind of gathering with our mining. We should be bringing back in the iron, which we can, can convert into alloys in Sector 2 here through the steel mill once that gets done. We're then going to start throwing out our first population. Maybe when we do that, they'll tell us what happened, actually, which will be quite interesting. So that's going to be all to play for in the next episode. Remember, if you like the series, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the game, like the series like this video really and uh leave a comment if you've got any suggestions or things you'd like to see me do or improve on i think i could probably improve on looking at the alerts i know i get very um tunnel vision and i don't necessarily see things all the time when i get bogged down with something i'm just looking at right in front of me i'll try to get better with that but anyways other than that yeah please let your i'm looking forward to reading the comments i'm doing a few of these in bulk remember if you're a channel member you'll be able to watch them all immediately pretty much uh, but if not, they'll release it every couple of days. So I won't be able to see any feedback for the first few episodes, and then I'll be able to catch up on everything. All right, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. A structure belonging to the Black Market Society has been discovered on Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Further data is not available due to the site firing upon the Tycoon's probe as it approached. In Sector 1. Oh my god, it's right there. We're mid-explosion. That is so dangerous, by the way. And that's the EVA airlock. Oh my god, it's so bad that that would explode. Outer Hope is surrounded by wreckage and debris from a past battle. Broken equipment and frozen bodies float around the station. The emergency signal is transmitting from inside. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.